sixth grade, module three, lesson 15, classwork. I'm gonna skip example one because that's just something you can do in class with your teacher, but example two says components of the co coordinate plane. All points on the coordinate plane are described with reference to the origin. What is the origin and what are its coordinates? So I'm gonna use this up here. And if you did this in class, you would have drawn, maybe your lines were straighter than mine, drawn a coordinate grid and this right there is the origin so the origin this is the y-axis this is the x-axis we'd have points here here maybe you used grid paper but the origin is right here so the origin is at zero zero and it's where the x and y axes intersect so it's where this x-axis and this y-axis, where they come together. So let's describe it. We can say the origin is where the x and y axes intersect. And say the coordinates are zero zero to describe locations of points on the coordinate plane we use blank of numbers so we use ordered pairs of numbers for example zero zero is an ordered pair so that's just shown by Order is important, so the coordinate plane, we use the form, we put parentheses around it, x comma y. So we put the x coordinate and then the y coordinate. The first coordinate represents the point's location on the x axis, and the second coordinate represents the point's location from zero on the y axis. Number one. Use the coordinate plane below to answer parts A through C. Graph at least five points on the x-axis and label their coordinates. So we're going to graph five points on the x-axis. So this is x-axis, this is y. And I'm just going to pick five. So I'm going to plot there, here. So this point would be, if we were using a scale of one, would be two comma zero because we go over two but up zero this is let's see one two three four five six seven zero plot this one would be five zero let's do some negative so right there would be negative one zero and that's negative five zero Okay, so what do the coordinates of your points have in common? So what I notice is that all of the coordinates have a y coordinate of zero. So each point, oops, has a y coordinate of zero. So like we notice here, it's five, zero, negative one, zero, two, zero, five, zero, seven, zero. So if it's on the x-axis, the y-coordinate is zero. So let's look at the, oh, we need to see, see. What must be true about any point that lies on the x-axis? So if it lies on the x-axis, the y-coordinate must be zero because it's located zero units above or below the x-axis. So let's say what must be true, the y-coordinate must be 0 because the point is 0 units above or below. y-axis. Oh, 
sorry, the x-axis. Right, it's zero units above or below this axis. It's right on it. Number two, use the coordinate plane to answer parts A through C. Graph at least five points on the y-axis. So now we're gonna do the same thing, but for y. So let's see, it's a little clogged there, so I'll go all the way up here. So that's one, two, three, four. So we went over zero and up four. So we have zero, four. Let me use something darker. So we have zero, four. Um, we could do zero, seven. Let's go down here. This would be negative one, two, three, four, five. Zero, negative five. Zero, negative seven. And then we could do zero, negative nine. So what do you notice about those? Those coordinates all have an x-axis of zero. So we can say they... X coordinate of zero. What must be true about any point that lies on the x axis or on the y axis? So we could say it must have zero as the x coordinate. because it is zero units to the left or right of the y-axis. So to kind of explain that, so it's all on the y-axis, so we didn't move on the y um, either left or right on this x-axis. So that's why the x is zero. If the origin is the only point with zero for both coordinates, what must be, must be true about the origin? So the origin, what we can see here, it's where the x and y axes intersect. So it's the only point where those two are intersecting. Let's say the origin is the only point That is on both the x and y axes. Example three, quadrants of the coordinate plane. So uh, there are four quadrants on the coordinate plane. We've mostly been working in this quadrant right here, quadrant one, but there is also a quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. So they're written in Roman numerals. That's why I didn't write just one, two, three, or four. And so let's go to exercises four through six. Number four, locate and label each point described by the ordered pairs below. Indicate which of the quadrants the points lie in. So A is seven, two. So we're gonna go over seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and up two. So there is seven, two, and that's in quadrant one. So remember it goes clockwise, quadrant one, two, three, and four. So that is in quadrant one. Three, negative four. So we're gonna go over three. One, two, three, three to the right, but then it's negative four, so we're going down four. So here is three, negative four, and that is in quadrant four. One, negative five, so we go over one and down five. One, two, three, four, five, and that's also in quadrant four. Negative three, eight, so we're gonna to go to the left three, negative three, and then positive eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's negative three, eight, and that's quadrant two. 
And lastly, we have negative 2, negative 1. So negative 2 neg down negative 1. That is in quadrant 3. Number 5, write the coordinates of at least one other point in each of the four quadrants. So let's write, do something in quadrant 1. So I plot, how about there? So there's quadrant 1, that's 2, 2. It could be anywhere in quadrant 1. So there's lots of different right answers here. Quadrant 2, let's plot something over here that one. So that would be negative 3, positive 2. So as long as your first length, your x coordinate is negative, y coordinate is positive. Quadrant 3, we'll plot this. So that's negative 2, and then negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So negative 2, negative 6. So both are negative, both the x and y are negative. And then quadrant 4, I'll plot right here. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 1. So x is positive, y is negative. Do you see any similarities to the points within each quadrant? So let's start with quadrant 1. What do we notice about all of the coordinates in quadrant 1? Well, the x and y coordinates are both positive. So that's the similarities I see between those. So I'm going to say um, the x and y coordinates are both positive. Quadrant 2, we have negative 3, 8, negative 3, 2. So they're both have, they both have a negative x coordinate and a positive y coordinate. So I'm going to put negative x coordinate, positive y. Quadrant 3, negative 2, negative 6, negative 1, negative, negative 2, negative 1. So both the x and y are negative. And quadrant 4, over here we have 1, negative 5, 3, negative 4, 6, negative 1. So the x coordinate is positive, y coordinate is negative. So positive x coordinate, negative y coordinate. And that is all.